Welcome back to segment two of the Bible says this, what say you? Psalms 33 verse four, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now, I have with me the man of God that I was referencing in our first segment. I guess we'll call this the redemption segment. You know, the Bible says uh, that such were some of you, but now you are washed. Now you are sanctified. Now you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. I have with me Elder Raleigh. Christopher Williams from Angier, North Carolina, a man that I've known now for what, about 30 years or so? Yes, sir. Hey, Brother William. How you doing, Chris? Man, thank you. Thank you for yes, joining me. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining our audience out there yes, sir. Uh, for a segment of the Bible says this, what say you? Now, yes. this guy, this guy, uh, you look, he's tougher. I'm going to give my age away a little bit. He's tougher than the late John Wayne. You know, when John Wayne was sick, John yes, Wayne said, get out of here, death. Yes, sir. Well, this guy is tougher than John Wayne. He's a mighty man of God, a dear friend of mine, a brother that I love and that we love and deeply respect here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And this man, this man represents a group of people, a huge group of people that uh, that people say do not exist. And that is people who were lost in the sin of homosexuality and the Lord brought them out, saved them by the blood of Jesus, delivered them just as he delivered people from fornication, from adultery, from gambling, from drinking, you name it, you name it. Uh, we, we all, we've all been delivered. Yes. And, and thank God for his delivering power. Yes. Thank God yes, for his delivering power. Now, I want you to hear from this man. Now, Brother Williams, we, we, we're going to talk a little bit, just me and you. We're going to yes, forget sir. all about the camera. Yes, <laughs> no, but I want you to talk to the audience out there because your story is going to help a lot of people. Yes. Now, when did you come to the upper room? Tell, tell them a little bit about yourself. I uh, came to the upper room in uh, the uh, late 80s. Yes, sir. And uh, I uh, joined, and mm -hmm. um, at the time it was uh, uh, up on a Bishop Turner. Yeah. Pastor Turner. Yeah, the late, great James Henry Turner. Yes, sir. My pastor yes, and sir. founder of the Upper Room. Yes, yes sir. And then um, at that time, after Ella Turner died, we were looking for a pastor. <laughs> and then they found you. Because yeah, yeah. I remember uh, when at that time I was married. Mm -hmm. I came down to Rockingham. Yes, sir. Me and my wife. Yes, sir. You treated us with glass. She was at the Lighthouse Church of God in Christ. That's right. That's yeah, right. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen, your memory is better than mine. He's 100% correct and came down. And, and once I was appointed to the church, uh, we kind of we kind of just uh, did a clean slate type thing. And uh, I'd heard some, some, some rumors and different things about persons who may be involved in this, that, or the other. But. We, when you take over a church, when you when you become the pastor, yes, yes. everything is reset, yes. and and you start from there. Now let's move it up a little bit. What happened to you, uh, or during those days? Because uh, eventually, you ended up uh, leaving your wife, leaving the church. What transpired? What uh, transpired, Bishop, was this: I uh, uh, I could preach. Yes, sir. And had the north did upon me. Yes, sir. And had uh, folks to say, pat me on the back, say, you can preach and you uh, can have your own church. And right. I did. Mm -hmm. I went to Lillerton. Yes, sir. And pastor the church there. And I'll never forget it. Uh, you was downstairs. We was in the basement. Mm -hmm. And you was uh, telling me about. Yes, sir. Amen, Raleigh. You need to be careful about that church. Yes, sir. You told me, and I did not listen. Yes, sir. I listened to black folk. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to a different, uh, I was the director. I directed the different choirs. Yes, sir. Uh, in Andrew and in Lillerton mm -hmm. and Harney County and at State University. Yes, sir. And then I went to the, I uh, messed around and went to the uh, the big uh, choir uh, festival in Atlanta. Okay. Where Jane Sleeper was. Mm. And of course it was full of sisters. Yes, sir. Full of young late men. And, mm -hmm. and that was it. Right, right, and right. And started happening and started traveling a lot and mm -hmm. started uh, lying to my wife and started uh, missing church. Yes, sir. Bible study. 
of running from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had no, I had to come at. You yes, sir. Because yes, you were telling the truth. See, the setup of Satan was at the at the at the upper room where we were then at the yes. Lake Willow Road location. Yes. The pastor's study and everything was downstairs. Yes, it was. And when we talked about it downstairs in the in the in the office, I, I warned you uh, about the church. Uh, now, I respected your call, but I, I warned you because I felt yes, that it was a setup of Satan. And it is true. Now, this this brother, he can preach. This guy can preach asleep. So you've always been an excellent preacher. But this was a trick of the enemy yes, to get you out prematurely. That's not to say that you shouldn't have pastored ever. Right. But, you know, sometimes God will say, I'm not saying never, but I am saying not now. Not now. And, and the minister has to be willing to hear and it went from there to the choirs and the and uh, and, and with James Cleveland and, and Atlanta, and so lying to the wife and that kind of a thing. And so you, what happened? Did you did you? How did you end up in the homosexual lifestyle? Well, how to end up in it? Uh, a lot of times when I would go to the gospel workshop, yes, sir, in different states, uh, I would not take my wife. Okay, and I would go by myself. Right. And I would know, I knew people here from uh, different places right. that I knew, and we would travel. Right, sir. And then they were always uh, under my, but uh, it started when I was 10 years old. I see. I got molested I by see. my cousin. Yes, sir. When I was 10 years old. Yes, sir. Uh, how that came about, I stole gum <laughs> from the store. Yes, sir. And he knew that my mother and father did not like a thief. Mm -hmm. And my daddy said, if you ever get caught stealing, I'm going to beat you. Yes, sir. So he tricked me in stealing the gum. And um, I never forget it. He said, well, if you don't steal, if you don't uh, uh, tell me or give me the gum, I'm going to tell them. Right. So that night while I was at, at their house visiting, uh, he uh, more or less uh, attacked me while I was in the bed. Yes, sir. So that's how it first got started at the age of 10. Now... The truth is, the average person that you talk to, yes, sir, who is in this lifestyle, yes, that's their testimony. Am I right about that? Right, yes, sir. And see, listen, viewers. At the age of ten, he's a boy. He's a child. That could have happened to anyone. At the age of 10, you, you at the, the mercy of a wicked man yes. who possibly, when he was 10, yes, sir. had the same thing to happen to him. Do you see the setup here, my friends? Uh, th this, I, I said one time to someone, and I was not trying to be facetious, it, it's almost like the, 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 the vampire. Yes, sir. The, the vampire bites his victim. We know vampires aren't real, but I'm, 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 I'm giving this as an example. Then the victim comes back as a vampire. Yes, and then they take advantage of, of someone else, so forth and so on. You were introduced. Now, at 10, what you're saying then is that your first sexual experience, because I'm sure, encounter, because I'm sure you weren't sexually active at 9. No. <laughs> or seven or eight, you know, no, uh, eight, you know, <laughs> not, not at five. So at, at 10, you were introduced into the world of sexual sexuality. Yes, sir. By being molested by a uvuncula, a wicked someone you trusted who betrayed you, loved one. Yes, sir. It was right. Yes, sir. And that started... Uh, a, a, a spiral. I imagine that that was a secret that you kept. Yes, I did. Uh, one thing about my mother, uh, she knew something was going on at the age of 10 up to I got to 20. Mm. And uh, she always would ask me about things of, about women. Right. Uh, when I got in high school, did I date one? Did I like one? Mm -hmm. And I always say, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I had these feelings for men. Right, right. Because of what happened to you. Because me. of what happened to you. Yes, yes sir. sir. And you say from 10, it was, it was not a one-time occurrence. Is that what you're saying? Right, yes, sir. Multiple times yes. over the years. Yes, sir. My Lord. But I praise God that uh, throughout the years, uh, people didn't understand that uh, uh, when you go on dialysis,
Yes, sir. It don't, uh, it'll mess you, uh, your stomach, a eh, area up in your lining. Yes, sir. And uh, um, people don't know about dialysis, but I've been on it for 20 years. Yes, sir. And I should have been dead. Yes, sir. But I came back, and after all, mm. me getting married. Yes, sir. Had a child, me yes, and my sir. wife. Yes, sir. Separation. And I told her, and like I told you. Yes, sir. And I tell the audience, it was the marriage was my fault. Right. You did. You did say that. Yes, I sir. Tell you, and I tell you, Yes, sir. And, and it was your fault, it, but it was your fault by default. Deeper. Because of what had trans, what had been done to you. Yes, sir. And I and I appreciate that you didn't, you owned it, but the truth is, you were a victim as well. Yes, sir. Of of the behavior of a wicked person. Yes, sir. And it, it broke your wife's heart. Yes, it did. It affected your family. Yes. Uh, our relationship, we never fought or became enemies, but. You know, I'm staying with the cross, with the cross and the truth of God. Yes, you did. And at and at that time, you you wanted this other this other other world, right? More than Christ. I did. What transpired? What uh, uh, took place is one day we was uh, I was with this young man. We was on our way to Florida, Bishop. On a Thursday, we were planning on leaving Friday mm -hmm. midnight. Yes, sir. To go to Florida, he and I. To get married, mm. and you came on the radio. Praise God! I'm double PJL. Yes, sir. You said you're faggots. You're Is that what I said? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know you said, that's a word now. <laughs> and when you use that word now, you 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 almost crucified for it. But faggot was an appropriate <laughs> metaphor. Yes, because the word literally means a bundle of dead sticks. Yes, yes. A bundle of dead sticks tied together mm -hmm. that will not germinate right. and actually a bundle of dead sticks today is actually called a faggot yes. so if you take a, bun a bunch of men and put them in a room and yes. let them do whatever they do nobody comes out pregnant am i right right there's no germination hence the metaphor yes. but okay for the sake of this so this guy uh you heard me preaching and i and i and i said they were going to hell and what happened so i went to uh, i talked to uh, my godmother mm -hmm. she's passed and gone she went on to glory and then uh, I began to tell her that I want to be delivered. Mm. And she told me, she said, this is what I want you to do. I followed her lead. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my God, uh, my uncle, he went on and died. And uh, before me and him, she, he told me the same thing. She said, Bishop, you're a preacher. Get yourself together. Yes, sir. So I came. I never forget it. I came to the church. Yes, sir. In the year when my mother died, mm. I called here to the church in Ella Cooper. Will Mitch Cooper was uh, your assistant. Yes, sir. He said, I would get with Bishop. Yes, sir. I would get with Pastor, mm -hmm. Superintendent. Mm -hmm. So you met with me. And when I talked with you, the love that you had for me. Hallelujah. And to reach out and reach out and say, I'm going to pull you out of this. Yes, sir. And you told me, you said, Raleigh, you come here to Bible study, you come to church, you'll stay delivered. Hallelujah. And that's what I've been doing Hallelujah. for the last 20 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> see, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is good. And, and see, the, th the thing about it is, it was that hard truth. Yes, sir. That, that shocked you when you were about to go and marry this guy. Yes, sir. It was that hard word, that, that cutting word yes, sir. that stopped you. Yes, sir, it did. Matter of fact, you told me when you heard it, 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 it froze you. Yes, yes it did. Yes, you did, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to talk some more with, with this man of God. And, 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 and you see, saints, we're trying to. The point is, Jesus saves. And I want to say to anyone out there who, who is watching this broadcast, uh, th this, this segment here of, of the Bible says this, what say you? Perhaps you've been molested. Perhaps you've been taken advantage of. Perhaps a uncle, a parent, a friend, a confidant, a minister, a bishop, whatever. Someone took advantage of you. I'm here to say that there is redemption. Raleigh Williams is living witness that there is redemption in the blood of Jesus. You do not have to stay in that broken lifestyle that will destroy you if you stay in it, there is room at the cross for you. Amen. Jesus died for you. Amen. He loves you yes. and he will set you free. Yes. And if anybody tries to tell you different, my friends, they're lying to you. 
Because the word of the Lord says this, these things, and the word of the Lord is right. right. My friends, the Bible says this. What say you? Join me for segment three.